And John Elliott, now former national security spokesman and former deputy assistant to President Trump. Uh, thank you for being here. So we've got the legal implications of all of this. We've also got the political implications, potentially. How is Trump's team, his political team behind the scenes, trying to prepare for a few different scenarios here? Well, first of all, Marnie, it's great to be with you again. But the fact of this matter is that it's really a Rorschach test when you look at it. You have people who are on the one side who really didn't dislike the former president, and you have those who really support the former president. And they really view the facts in this case differently. The problem here is that we, we're kind of going into the area of banana republic here. This has never happened before for a, for a former president to be indicted, arrested, and brought in and this has just never happened before this happens in places like brazil it happens in really banana republic countries uh down in south america over the years but it has never happened in the greatest democracy in the country and so when you're talking about a dispute of facts which is what this is at the bottom line and then you're talking about in taking the unprecedented step of really destabilizing our political order by doing so over <clears throat> what the equivalent of a pra of a traffic ticket would be compared with all the homicides and everything else that's happening on Alvin Bragg's watch down as the district attorney in New York. It's just a travesty that it's gotten to this point, and it's really a farce when you look at it. And so his political advisors are preparing for pointing that, those facts out directly. So you you say it's a dispute of facts, but it also could be considered a pursuit of facts, right? That's the, the goal of a prosecutor is to understand the facts. So you've got a camp of people who say it is a banana republic. Who cares, right? It's such a minor thing. It's a misdemeanor offense. It's a former president. I mean, this thing could just blow up. But then you also have a group of people who go, well, okay, I want to know if a law was broken, and if so, if you break the law, I want accountability. How do you reconcile those two different, very different thoughts? Well, the media is really going into contortions here, the mainstream media, in, in terms of trying to have no double standard. Because if you look at the way Hillary Clinton had her aide destroy evidence in terms right before a presidential election, in terms of destroying her server, destroying her cell phones with a hammer. If you look at the 51, that was concealing a, that was influencing an election by concealing potential bad story from Hillary Clinton. You had the same thing with Joe Biden with the Hunter Biden laptop, where he had 51 former intelligence officials who wrote a, a letter saying that this was Russian disinformation. Now it's admitted by Biden's legal team, Hunter Biden's legal team, that that was actual, that was a, work to that was his laptop and therefore it was an attempt to influence an election by putting down what would have been an embarrassing story and that's really what this is it's if you did pay hush money for a non-disclosure agreement that happens whether or not there it's not an admission of guilt but there are steps that other candidates on the other side of the aisle have taken and there are no consequences for those so it's really seen as a double standard by the president's supporters right i i hear you i mean there should be no one who is above the law no matter the the magnitude of the crime right i think everybody should be able to agree on that the but same standard should be applied exactly Absolutely. exactly okay so so the House Judiciary Committee wants an investigation into the DA, Alvin Bragg. One, is that warranted? And two, could there be consequences for getting involved in an active investigation and case? Well, look, they want to find the facts and specifically where the ambit of authority from the Congress comes in is to investigate whether there were federal funds used on to prosecute the president in this particular case, because if that's collusion between the federal government and a supposedly independent district attorney here, that's something that needs to come to light. But one other thing is that just happened yesterday and is very underreported by the media is that Michael Cohen, the accuser here, the one who is providing testimony saying that this was hush money, his lawyer, a guy named Bob Costello, testified for something like six hours yesterday in front of the grand jury and said under a non under a ability to waive the attorney client privilege that Michael Cohen provided him. He, he said that the facts were just absolutely not true. And so Bob Costello, that evidence is the first time the grand jury's heard that. So Look, you can indict a ham sandwich is what they said from a from a grand jury and especially in Manhattan where 80 percent of people voted against Trump in the last election. So who knows what impact they will have. But Bob Costello did give apparently convincing testimony that this was all made up by Michael Cohen. And so we'll see where the facts go. But look, this is 
just if you return to the fact this is an unprecedented step. And so to do this for a former president when you didn't do it for a sitting president in the case of Joe Biden with similar facts about about obstructing evidence and same thing with Hillary Clinton. This is just going into weaponizing a a system of justice that really should be not going to this level. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. John Aliat, uh, former national security spokesman, former deputy assistant to President Trump. Appreciate your time this morning. Thank you, Marnie. Appreciate it. Coming Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.